Today we've come to the UK headquarters for Myra, the Motor Industry Research Association. Now in terms of safety and performance, probably the most important thing on your car are its tyres. After all, they're what connect the car to the road. Now Wayne Rooney's a brilliant footballer, but he wouldn't score too many goals if he played in a pair of slippers. So it doesn't matter how good your car is, without a good set of rubber, you won't get through the corners properly, and more crucially, you won't be able to stop the car very quickly. But what if the amount of tread they required was actually much higher than we're being led to believe? Myra's Warwickshire base is home to a vast complex of test tracks, the ideal place for a study into the performance of variable tyre tread depths on wet tarmac, organised jointly by Auto Express magazine and Continental Tyres. Tim, the current legal requirement for tyre tread is 1.6 millimetres, but you're not so sure that that should be the case anymore. It was some years ago that the uh, tests were done to see the effect of tread depth on wet braking and cars and tyres have changed so much in that time, it was about 20 years ago when the last tests were done, um, that we thought we should conduct the tests again and see if modern braking systems, modern tyre technology, um, modern suspension on cars actually made a difference to these figures. Matt, just explain to us the format of what you're doing here today. All we're doing is taking four popular cars and we're brake testing them in the wet with three millimetres of tread depth and we're doing five runs on each car to get an average to see how far it takes them to stop when they've got three millimetres of tread. Then we're getting them with 1.6 millimetres of tread which is the legal limit and in the same test again to find out the average stopping distance for those cars with 1.6. And we're doing that because we want to find out how much difference that 1.4 millimetres makes to your stopping distance and the idea is that a lot of manufacturers recommend that you should change your car at 3 millimetres rather than the actual legal limit because the actual performance of the tyre really tails off after 3 millimetres tread depth. And so two days of intensive tyre testing began using four different types of road car for comparison. Small hatchbacks represented by the Renault Clio while an Audi A4 covered the larger executive car. A Toyota RAV4 covered MPVs and the Ford Focus represented medium-sized family cars. All four ran on a special wet test track designed to simulate a motorway in rainy conditions. Matt explains how the braking distances were recorded. Well, what we do, we drive the car at 75 miles an hour, and when we hit the cones, we hammer on the anchors, and we do full ABS braking right till we come to a standstill. And the clever computer, using sat-nav technology, works out as soon as we go past 70 miles an hour, the distance it takes for us to come to the halt. So the first step of the process was to send all four vehicles onto the wet strip with tread depths of three millimetres. The team measuring the average braking distance from 70 miles an hour down to standstill across five runs per car. With the results logged, it was back to the garage for a change of tyres. This time the tread depths were down to 1.6 millimetres, pretty well worn, but still legal. Job done, a short break, and then it was back out onto the test track. The Audi A4 was the first to head back out with 1.6 millimetres tread and the difference was immediately apparent. A visible build-up of water underneath the car as the shallower groove struggled to disperse the water as quickly. The result, an average braking distance that increased by some 30 metres. And that's around an extra six car lengths. Next up, the Toyota RAV4. Again, the point of using four cars was not to compare the braking distance of each model, but to measure a cross-section of cars with different weights, since the weight that the tyres have to carry is a key factor. This time the car took an extra 37 metres to stop, and it was still doing 50 miles an hour at the point at which the same car on 3mm tread had stopped. To illustrate, we filmed both runs from the same camera point, the upper screen showing the car on 3mm tread, the lower screen on 1.6. A pretty conclusive result. And the results for the Clio were very similar. On average, an additional 38 metres braking distance on the 1.6 millimetre tyres. And again, the car was still travelling at 50 miles an hour, where it would have stopped with the 3 millimetre tyres on. The final car to be put to the test was the Ford Focus. This time, the car took an extra 44 metres to stop on the 1.6 millimetre tread than on 3 millimetres. That's around nine car lengths. Again, the split-screen view brings the point home. The car on the 3mm tread shown above and the same car on 1.6mm tread shown below.
So across the four cars, the results showed an average increase in braking distance by some 37.25 metres when the tyres were run down to the legal limit. So the statistics spoke for themselves, but did our test driver feel the difference when he was behind the wheel? Here's Matt with an insight. You can feel it skate a bit and it's basically, you've got no control, it's like floating around, it's like just drifting like it's almost on ice when it's on 1.6. It's incredible, I, I'm so shocked at the results, I thought it would be quite impressive but this is amazing, it's really quite horrific and I'll be changing my tyres a lot earlier than I actually planned. Tim, could you just explain to us how the tyre tread performance actually works? Yeah, the main function of the tread pattern on the tyre at all is to clear water away from under the tyre. If we could drive on dry roads at all, we wouldn't need a tread pattern, basically. And it's particularly these main central grooves that clear away the water from underneath the tyre, stop the pressure building up and stop aquaplaning, which is really the water getting under the tyre and actually lifting the tyre off the road. So that's why we think this is a really important safety message to, uh, to motorists, that the best balance really between economy and safety uh, is, to, is to consider changing it three millimetres particularly if you're a high mileage driver, particularly if you're travelling uh, on high speed roads, dual carriageways and motorways frequently, then this really is an important safety issue. From a survey of 3,000 motorists, it's evident that the average motorist drives around 8,000 miles each year, and Continental estimate that changing tyres that little bit earlier when down to a 3mm tread would only cost around another £20 per year. It's a small price to pay to be able to stop safely on wet roads and certainly much less costly than the alternative.